Melissa, welcome to Brighton and Hove Albion. How does it feel to be part of the club? It's an exciting time. I'm over the moon to be here. Uh, such a fantastic organisation with incredible support for the women's programme. So I'm looking forward to diving in. I know we've got a task at our hands, but I think there's a really good platform for us to build an identity and push on from here. It's been quite a quick transition period for you just now. What was the recruitment process like? Yeah, to be fair, you know, I'd been in discussions with um, some of the board and, and management at the club and uh, the, the conversations have all been really positive. They've been incredibly supportive of both the women's programme, but also the fact that this is going to be a process and they've really reiterated their support of me and what we have at the club to operate and that the resources are really limitless um, when looking at what we have available to us and, and the growth of the women's game, I think. Um, there's a lot to, to really utilise to make sure that the programme is successful. So the transition's been quick, but I've definitely felt well supported. It's been a first few days for yourself. How have they been for you? Yeah, it's been great to, to meet the staff and meet the team. You know, I think credit to Amy, who has really been a mainstay amidst transition um, in, in management this year. And I think it's a credit to the people who are in the building, despite the position that we're in. It's a really class group of staff and players and we're all in this together to, to get to the position where we want to be at the end of season and I think there's definitely that sentiment throughout so it's now just putting in the work and making sure that our, our performances continue to grow along the way. And how did you know that the return to England was the right move for you? Yeah I think my heart was always here in England. I think at the time that I left I found it really difficult because I had been a part of an organisation very much like what I'm walking into that wants to build and wants to grow and is incredibly ambitious and, and one that I share values with and I found that all very much in Brighton. It's a place that has a really ambitious vision for the women's programme that they share values of caring for people and it being a community club and the support for the women's programme is, is really unparalleled in terms of the facilities we have to operate in and so there was just a lot of excitement about the opportunity at hand and the direction that we want to move into and I feel that I can bring that culture piece that maybe we've been missing or that identity on the pitch to really solidify and provide clarity for the direction of the club. Talking about the facilities you were saying earlier how amazing that the, the training ground is how key is that for the squads and competing in the WSL? Yeah, I think when you look at what we have to operate within day to day, it's world class. It really is. They've done such an excellent job with the, the women's facility in the building and being a competitive entity in the WSL, we really do have everything we need. And I think most importantly, from a recruitment standpoint, as we grow the team and, and move forward in future years, it's, it's a lot to sell and a lot to... Uh, provide players a platform where they really do have the ability to develop and compete at the highest level. And how would you describe your philosophy and, and managerial style? I think first and foremost this is a people business so I really do want my care for the players and staff as individuals to, to come through and to make sure that they feel valued and that they also feel stretched and challenged um, but they know that I'm alongside them in that process. Uh, from an on-pitch standpoint, I think, uh, of course, I want my team to be high-pressing and possession-oriented, but I think that's quite easy to say. I think we need to be very dynamic in our ability to play against various styles that were presented within the WSL. I think there's a pretty stark difference between the top half of the table and the bottom half of the table right now in terms of what happens on the pitch. And so I think we have to be pretty adaptive and dynamic to those conditions and, and have a couple different ways about how we play. You've previously coached in the English game with London City Lionesses. Tell us a wee bit more about your experience as a coach. Yeah, I think um, I've obviously known I've, I've wanted to coach from a very young age and been in the profession immediately after my playing days and probably spent equal amounts of time as a head coach as I have an assistant coach. And, and I've been fortunate enough to, to work for some really incredible mentors in the women's game um, who've helped me grow my identity as a coach and, and what I stand for and, and making sure that I operate within my values. And that was a, very much a part of our success at, in London City in the past and helping us become a, a top of table contender is 
when we spoke about what we believed in and what we wanted to achieve, we attracted people who believed in those same things and it bodes well on the pitch. You can create an identity both on and off. Um, and that's exactly what we'll love to do here is to attract ambitious quality people first and foremost and grow alongside each other alongside the women's game as well. You'd said earlier that you're very much aware of the position in, in the league. For all that that's a, a challenging aspect, it's also slightly exciting in the sense that you have a lot to fight for. Yeah, I think right now the only way is to go is up. So we have to make sure that we're moving towards that every single day with with our training sessions, with our standards, with our off-pitch analysis, with how we operate as staff and players and how we interact with each other every single day. I think creating a culture or an identity doesn't happen overnight. It's a process and it's something that we're going to have to try to establish and implement very quickly. I think we we definitely don't take our league position lightly, but it's not something that we're speaking about every day. What we're speaking about is the performances and the process to which gets us to our end result and where we want to be at the end of the season and maintaining our focus game by game and, and point by point. Is that an environment that you thrive in with some external noise, but not letting it impact you too much? Absolutely. I think, you know, success makes noise at the end of a season and so if we can achieve that and, and remain as a WSL club this year it will um, it really will be a good achievement considering the amount of transition that the players and staff and club have gone through throughout this season it's not it's certainly not easy to go through management changes let alone growing alongside the rapid growth of the women's game and being able to push forward as an entity ourselves and that's something that we'll really have to look to do in the summertime um, to make sure that we're in a position to be competitive going into next year. It's an exciting time as well, obviously your first game in charge will be the semi-final against Manchester United. How much are you looking forward to that and the challenges that it will bring? Look, I think um, what an achievement for the the girls and the staff and the club to be in an FA Cup semi-final. I think that's a real credit to, like I said before, Amy and the stability that she's provided to the organisation amidst transition this year. I think it's a, it's a great achievement and we certainly look forward to that game and the opportunity to test ourselves against a team that they played, obviously, the weekend past before the international break. and what better way than to go challenge ourselves against a team who's currently top of the table than to have those lessons and learnings from the match to prepare us and propel us into the league games that we have and the stretch that we have ahead. And how key have the, like Amy and the rest of the staff been in this transition period to, to lean upon against? Yeah, the staff has been brilliant, um, really welcoming and really want to make sure that I have as much information and perspective as possible to make the the best decisions about where we might need to adapt or adjust or flex in terms of our our growth and our movement forward in the in the next few weeks so you know it's a lot of listening and understanding and learning about where we currently are but more importantly where we want to go from here and then making sure that we take action towards that and for you what are the key objectives that you want to achieve here at the club yeah i think my ambition very much aligns with the ambition of the women's organization to be a top four entity and i don't think that you know changing the culture and um the competitive aspect of the the team is going to be difficult it's it's certainly a much larger task to do in the wsl than it is the championship to to flip a team and make it very competitive at the top of the table but I believe that we do have every resource necessary to really make steps towards that in the coming years. And, and that's the most important thing. I think it's to be a competitive, stable WSL entity that challenges teams at the top of the table. We want to have a really clear vision and identity about us both on and off the field that we can be proud of.